Hello and welcome to this A-Level Chemistry exam question walkthrough. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at two questions about electrode potentials and electrochemical cells. Feel free to download the questions from the description and have a go at them yourself and then watch this video back to see how you got on. In this video I'm going to be writing my thoughts down in blue and the answers that are going to get you the actual marks will be written in purple. This question is about electrode potentials and electrochemical cells. State the meaning of the term electrochemical series. Well, they've actually given us an example of an electrochemical series here. And an electrochemical series is where you show a series of electrode potentials in a particular order, a numerical order. And so that's one of the things that we could say for the one mark here. Alternatively, we could remark on the fact that we've got a series of half equations, and these half equations are shown in order of their electrode potential. Either of those is fine for the one mark. B says, state two conditions needed for the following half equations to have an electrode potential of 0, 0.0 volts. Now there's only one mark here, so we need both of them for that one mark. There are three standard conditions, if you remember. One is for temperature, and that's one of our options that we could say here, 298 Kelvin or 25 degrees C. I prefer stating that as Kelvin. And then we've got an aqueous solution of hydrogen ions. And so another condition is for concentrations. The hydrogen ion concentration needs to be one mole per decimeter cubed. And then the final condition, we've already got our two that we need, is for gases. And there is a gas here, so it is appropriate to say that the pressure for the hydrogen gas needs to be 100 kilopascals. The next question asks us to identify the weakest reducing agent in the table above. Well, all of the half equations in this table are written in the forwards direction. And so that means that the chemical on the left hand side gains electrons from something. And thereby, these things on the left hand side are the oxidizing agents because they take the electrons from something else. And that means that the things on the right hand side must be the reducing agents because they move backwards and generate electrons which they donate to something else. And so we're choosing from something on the right hand side. Well, the electropotential value tells us a measure of how good at going in the forwards direction these half equations are. So in other words, how good at taking electrons they are. So the larger number is the one that is best at moving forwards and therefore best at taking electrons. And so it follows that the larger number will have the chemical that is worst at going backwards. In other words, worst at donating electrons or most importantly, worst at reducing. And so that means that this chemical with the largest electropotential is the worst at going backwards. And so this cobalt with six water molecules in a complex ion will be the worst reducing agent. And correspondingly, if we'd been asked for the best reducing agent, it would have been the iron at the top. And the worst oxidizing agent is here, and the best oxidizing agent is here. Part D says, use half equations from the table uh, to deduce an equation for the reduction of VO2 1 plus to turn into VO2 plus in aqueous solution by iron. So we first need to identify the half equations that they're asking us about, and that is definitely this one, with an electropotential of 1. And iron appears in this top equation with an electropotential of minus 0.44. And so what's going to happen is the vanadium half equation will move forwards and the iron half equation will move backwards because the iron has the smaller electropotential. Now there's a trick here because the iron turns into this iron complex ion, Fe h 206 2 plus. And the trick comes because that same chemical appears lower down and it has still got a smaller electrode potential than vanadiums. And so this half equation will also go backwards. And so our final iron containing product is actually going to be FeH2O3+. And so what that means is overall, as a half equation, the iron is losing three electrons. And since the vanadium is only gaining one electron, we need to multiply vanadium's half equation through by three and then add that to the iron half equation. 
when we do that, we see that we've got three electrons on both sides of the two half equations. We also see that there are six water reactants in ions half equation and three water products in vanadiums. And so what that translates as, we need three water molecules in the final overall equation as our reactant. And so finally, we've got three VO2 one plus plus six H plus plus Fe plus 3H2O turns into 3VO2 plus plus the Fe H2O6 3 plus complex overall. And that's one mark for recognising that we're making Fe 3 plus as a product and one mark for the correct overall equation that I'm showing on the line here. Use data from the table to explain why cobalt with six waters with a 3 plus ion will undergo a redox reaction with the iron 2 plus complex ion with six water ligands. Give an equation for this reaction. Well, the explanation comes from the electropotential values. The cobalt complex with a three plus charge is down here on the left hand side of a half equation with an electropotential of 1.81, the largest in the series. And the iron 2 plus with six water ligands is up here with a smaller electropotential and it's on the right hand side of this half equation. We don't use this one up here because the water complex ion is on the left hand side and so that definitely wouldn't react with another oxidizing agent down here. And so the language that we need to use is just to simply talk about the magnitude of the electropotentials. And so we can simply say that cobalt 3 plus has a greater electropotential than iron 3 plus. The equation, therefore, will be looking at moving this equation in the forward direction and this equation in the backwards direction. Now, both of them involve the transfer of one electron. Cobalt is gaining one electron and the ion complex is losing one electron. And so, very nicely, we don't need to multiply either of these half equations together. And so, we need to, therefore, just write cobalt with six water ligands with a three plus charge overall, reacts with the iron two plus complex and turns into the cobalt two plus complex and the iron three plus complex. And so overall, the cobalt has been reduced by the iron. And then the last part of this question says, suggest why the two cobalt three complex ions in the table have different electropotential values. Well, the two cobalt three plus is cobalt with six ammonia ligands and then a three plus charge and cobalt with six water ligands and a three plus charge. And so, in fact, quite simply for this question, we just need to say that the cobalt three plus has got different ligands. With the ammonia ligands, it will have one colour and with the water ligands, it will have another colour. This question is about the development of lithium cells. The value of the electropotential for lithium suggests that a lithium cell could have a large EMF. And the table below shows some electropotential data. We've got three different half equations shown here with three different electropotential values. Use data in the table to explain why an aqueous electrolyte is not used for a lithium cell. Well, the top half equation will be the equation that has to be present for a lithium cell. And you can see here that we've got water, which is the component that makes something aqueous. And so if we look at these half equations, the electropotential for lithium is very, very small. That makes sense because lithium ions are very poor at taking electrons. They're far better as lithium atoms at donating electrons. And then the water's electropotential is larger, still negative, but much larger than lithium's. And so what would happen is the lithium half equation would go backwards and the water half equation would go forwards. So in other words, lithium would react with the water present in the electrolyte. And the reason that we would need to say for this to get our second mark, because this is a two mark question, is simply that lithium's electropotential is more negative than the electropotential for water. Or you could also say that they would have a positive EMF of the difference between these two numbers, which works out at 2.21 volts. In B, it says, in the 1970s, lithium iodine cells became a common power source for heart pacemakers. Lithium iodide is the final product of the cell reaction. Use the data in the table to calculate the cell EMF of a standard lithium iodine cell. 
To do this, well, I've already just said, actually, we need to find the difference between the two electropotential values. Obviously, this time we're using iodine's half equation and lithium's half equation. The iodine is the larger number, so it's always the larger number minus a smaller number. So 0.54 minus minus 3.04, which gives us an EMF of 3.58 volts. And then the last question on this page says an EMF value for a commercial lithium iodine cell is 2.8 volts. Suggest why this value is different from the value we've just calculated in part B of 3.58 volts. Well, the only answer we can possibly suggest is that there is something different about the conditions. When we calculated that EMF in part B, we used the electrochemical series and specifically we used these electropotential values which are taken under standard conditions. So the best answer for 9C is to simply say that these are non-standard conditions. In some lithium cells, lithium perchlorite, LiClO4, is used as the electrolyte. Deduce the oxidation state of chlorine in LiClO4. Well, to deduce the oxidation state of anything, we need to do two things. First of all, we need to acknowledge that the sum of all of the oxidation states of all of the atoms is equal to the overall charge. Well, LiClO4 doesn't have any charge. That means these oxidation states add up to zero. Lithium is in group 1 of the periodic table, so its oxidation state will be plus 1. Oxygen is in group 6 of the periodic table, so its oxidation state will be minus 2. And so then what we need to do is say that lithium plus chlorine plus 4 oxygen equals 0. So plus 1 plus chlorine minus 8 equals 0, so chlorine must be plus 7 for its oxidation state. In other lithium cells, lithium cobalt oxide electrodes and lithium electrodes are used. Give an equation for the reaction that occurs at the positive lithium cobalt oxide electrode. Now this is one that you just need to remember. The lithium cobalt oxide electrode has got the following half equation. It's got a reaction between lithium and cobalt oxide, as the name implies, and in that process one electron is gained. Remember, we always write this in the forwards direction. And when that happens, we make lithium cobalt oxide as one combined substance. Alternatively, you could keep those separated in the products, or at least keep them as being acknowledged as being ionic. And so you're writing Li plus CO2 minus. Either of those is fine. I prefer the top one. And then the final question says, give an equation for the reaction that occurs at the negative lithium electrode. Well, we saw in the previous electrochemical series that lithium is an electropotential of minus 3.04. And so it's going to be going backwards. And so that means that solid lithium is going to turn into lithium ions and in that process lose an electron. And so we need to write Li turning into Li plus plus one electron. And that's all necessary for the one mark. OK, that's the end of this question and that's the end of this video. I hope it was useful. I'll see you again soon.